that your name is exalted you are God all by yourself the first the last the beginning and the end I celebrate you today for life and favor thank you Jesus thank you for opening us into heaven thank you for reconciling us to the Father and engaging us in this ministry of reconciliation to the nations thank you because the world is getting better because you are filling us with light thank you for light thank you for revelation be glorified today be glorified our God we give you all the glory today Hello folks, good morning everybody. This is the hashtag Matthew 2414 show live on Gospel Tainment Radio. We are blessed and highly favored. Sent by God for this agenda to move in the advance of the kingdom of God. Yes, we are preaching a message, it's a strange message as yet. But this is the message that the Lord is revealing to us by the help of the Holy Ghost, who is teaching us all things, He's showing us things to come, He's bringing us into the agenda that God has for the nations, He's bringing us into the mystery that has been hidden in God since the foundation of the earth. He tells us that eyes have not seen, he tells us that no ear has heard. It has not entered the hearts of men the thing that God has reserved for those that love him. But he's telling us now, as we love him and keep his commandment, his spirit is revealing these things to us. The deep things of God is now being revealed to the sons of God. What an incredible privilege that the Lord has given us. And on that ground, I want to say welcome to my listeners those that are always anticipative of what God is doing, those that are expectant, I want to tell you, thanks for joining us today. Welcome, my listeners from all the continents of the world, our listeners from America, from the Americas, from the Caribbean, from North America, to Africa, Tanzania, South Africa, Zimbabwe, our listeners in Ghana, our listeners in Congo, Brazzaville, our listeners in North Africa, one of the regions of the biggest revivals that the nations will experience. I'm saying welcome to my listeners in Europe. Welcome to my listeners in East, the Eastern Bloc, Southern Europe. Welcome my listeners in Asia, in the Middle East. Welcome my listeners in Australia and the Oceania. I want to just encourage you and tell you to be expectant because the Lord is set to do something incredible today. The Lord is set to move like he's never moved before. Yes, he's set to do something incredible and first of all, I heard this song and it stirred something on my inside. I tell my Benson only you. And we'll just run it now. I want to give God this glory that he deserves. Say only him is only him is only him. Glory to God. We declare that you are the God of everything. Oh, thank you very much for joining. Thank you so much, man. The hand of the Lord is upon you, and the favor of God is visiting you wherever you are. Please let light go viral and let the nations know that the preaching of the gospel is now gone live. Let light go viral. Please share, share, share. The Lord is said to do something incredible in our midst. Glory to God. Sorry, I didn't do all this before I came. Very sorry about that. Yeah. 
so I'll tap it up. Okay. Thank you. Eh? Boom, 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 boom. Pastor Wale, thanks for joining today. I'm always encouraged when I see you watching on. Thank you so much for joining. Please pray for me so that God will give me utterance. There is something incredible that is breathing on my heart now and I must be in the right frame of mind to deliver it. We have come into a very strange season and um, everybody must be aligned, everybody must be alert and everybody must be aware. There's a lot of labor to be carried out, there's a lot of work to be done. This is the time to carry out the work of the ministry. The incredible work, incredible work and I'm sure God has raised you for such a time as this. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Please pray for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Father. Glory! There is no other God that is worthy to be praised. There is no other God that is worthy to take all the praises, to take all the glory. There is no other wiser God. Our only wise God who have patterned us in his plan. I'm talking about this mystery that has been before the foundation of the earth was laid. The mystery that has been unraveled in you and I. Christ has given us this incredible privilege to be partakers of this mystery. Apostle Paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery that has been hidden in Christ. And this is what we are here to propagate. We are here to reconcile the nations back into their place in this mystery. There's so much that we are talking about now. But first of all, I would like to declare under this unction the rise of a new generation of leaders in the church in all the nations. I'm talking about a new generation of leaders who will be able to preempt and align with the Holy Spirit to get dreams that will be sustained for a thousand years. Listen to me. I want you to understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about the rise of a people with a rare and uncanny ability to delve into the realms of the spirits and much like Noah, they could get the download of the ark. I'm talking about the design of a machine that had never been constructed before. I'm talking about something that no eyes have seen, something that no ear has heard, something that is only predetermined by God and something that is only accessible to those who are aligned with the realms of the spirit. And this is what Jesus Christ proclaims when he talks about the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. He talks about the alignment of two dimensions, especially in the capacity to advance the agenda of God on the earth. We're talking about a people who have the ability to look into heaven and see what the Lord is doing. People who have the ability to hear into heaven and judge, just as God judges. Hey, Kota Zaza. I'm talking about the rise of a generation of sons. Those that are led by the Spirit of God. Listen, the creation has earnestly awaited the manifestation of sons of God. Permit me to tell you that this message, this gospel of the kingdom, speaking about the governmental authority of Christ in the earth. I'm talking about the authority of Christ communicated to the world through the ministry of the church. A perfect breed of sons of God. I'm talking about this message. In his capacity to release the greatest longing that the nations have always expected. But much of what we have to engage today is predicated on the present circumstance. We have reached a dire state. There is now famine in the land. There is now confusion in what we've called the Christian church. There's not such division and many people are running after strange patterns and strange landmarks. Much as we will want to do, we are walking in iniquity and all we are doing 
by the name of Jesus has resulted in this malady that we have taken upon ourselves. Listen to me. Much of what is happening authorized activity unauthorized activity and must we continue in this ah uh, allow me say that a new generation of leadership has got to rise a new generation of people who will establish the new landmarks a new generation of people who will move in the name of the lord a new generation of people who will design a future for the next generation a new generation of people who will engage the great commission the basics the basics of the great commission a new generation of people who will communicate the government plan that jesus the christ king jesus has for the nations of the earth we're talking about the rise of a new generation who will establish new governmental structures for nations a new generation of people who will baptize the nations in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit i'm talking about a complete dimension of the nations in the agenda of god for the nations of the earth when he officiated his providence as the father when he officiates his providence as the son his government with man and now a more incredible expression of god because this the duplicity of the omnipresent god is revealed now god is living his life in men and through the power of the holy spirit is able to communicate the government that heaven has ever taught for the earth is still the biggest agenda in the heart of god to establish his leadership for the nations of the earth i'm talking about a political leadership i'm talking about a political governmental leadership for unto us a child is born for unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders we see clearly that the body of christ we have the responsibility to bear the governance of the territories of the earth especially when corruption has become the order of the day especially when fear and insecurity has pervaded the nations especially when the perplexity of nations has given the future has put the future of our children in an abysmal state there is need for the church to rise preaching the kingdom of god there is need for the church to rise practicing and teaching the government of christ there is need for the church to rise in the nations of the earth promoting god's redemption plan for the world through the salvation of man there is need for the church in all the nations to rise and promote the good news of the realms of the spirit we must bring the people of every tongue tribe and nation ethnicity and culture and language and creed we must bring them to the end of themselves because to be carnally minded is death we must bring them into the booty of being spiritually minded because only then can they have life and peace we must begin to communicate the commandments of jesus because jesus is perceived and known as king and lord of our lives first and then is lord over territories yes we must begin to communicate the things concerning the lordship of jesus we must begin to communicate the plans and the programs that will establish the cities in righteousness righteousness has got to exalt nations and this is the time for a new generation of leaders that can communicate and implement righteousness constitutionally in the nation yes yes the nations must be established in truth again the nations must be established in righteousness and justice again the nations must be established under the commandment under the authority of king jesus and this is what we are sent to we are first sent this ministry of reconciliation to bring the nations back to the place where they enjoy the favor of heaven to bring the nations back to the place where we can communicate 
their freedom from oppression. Yes, we must rise now from the dugouts as an army on this numero uno objective to deliver on the Great Commission. Make disciples of every nation. Preach the gospel to every creature. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all the things I've commanded you. Yes, this is what we must stand to proclaim. We must stand to proclaim this agenda that heaven has for the earth. And through the ministry of the church, we are screaming from the rooftops to bring the authority of Christ. The authority of only Christ. <laughs> the government of only Christ. Listen, there is a new dispensation coming on. And there's a church that is wielding this dispensation. I'm talking about the dispensation of the kingdom. And first of all, it comes with a new renewed commitment to deliver on the basics. To deliver on the basics. We must give God this glory. And the best glory we can give Him is our bodies. We must give God this glory. And the best glory we can give Him is our kingdoms that have been aligned to Him. The kingdoms of this world must become the kingdom of our God and of His Christ. Yes, we are in the agenda. We are in the business. We are in the work, job description to bring the kingdoms of this world. To make them become the kingdom of our God. I'm talking about Benin kingdom. I'm talking about the kingdoms of the Yoruba race. I'm talking about the kingdoms of the Hausas. I'm talking about the United Kingdom. I'm talking about the United Arab Emirates. I'm talking about Saudi Arabia. I'm talking about every kingdom, every nation coming under the authority of Christ. It's a governmental duty that we, the ambassadors of Christ, must carry out. We must go in every nation, go in every territory we find ourselves and advance the government of Jesus Christ. It becomes much easier for us at this time because most nations are disturbed by corruption. Human trafficking has become a threat, threatening our next generation. We have come and we have faced a backlog of challenges that has brought the nations to their knees. Terrorism and the global scare of Islamic fundamentalism has become a crisis in many nations. Yes, there's prejudice and race wars, ethnic cleansing, there's much happening and the division of humanity seems not to have an end. Listen to me, the secularization absurdities established by the degradation of our family system has come to bear in the shores of Africa. We have seen the increasing rise in the gay LGBT thought. It's become a theme of concern how that our next generation are now cross-dressing. We have now seen the prevalence of gender bending. It's become the norm now. It's become a new culture. And listen to me. Why a new generation must rise in the church? Because the systems that have been established under Christianity cannot establish the righteousness and godliness of the next generation. As it is the landmark set by our fathers of the faith, I must say this quite politely, has not been able to meet the challenges of the new dispensation. We have not been able to rightly solve the problems that has be 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 bedeviled the nation. This is why I must call this generation of leaders rising out of the church. The ones that know how to deploy the use of the basics. Praise God. You see, in my walk with God, and by the mercies of God, I've come to see certain prophetic patterns in the Old Testament that points to Jesus Christ with the church in the age of grace and I must tell you this is one of the bedrocks of the church of Christ we are a prophetic generation we are a chosen generation it means we are chosen in Christ 
so that we can discover prophetic patterns in the Old Testament and align ourselves with the commandment of God irrespective of what the world calls us because the world has given us a place that they call Christianity and the Christian identity but irrespective of that thing that the world gave us we have a responsibility to lock hands with the Holy Spirit as the chosen generation to find where it is written about us we have the responsibility to give our allegiance to our king by looking out for prophetic patterns in the Old Testament and aligning ourselves to it because the Old Testament is a shadow of things that come in Christ going forward. If you are in Christ, you have been separated from the world and consecrated, set apart for this particular task so that not one word that God has spoken not one word of the scriptures of the prophets will go back to God without performing the counsel for which it was sent. As the church, we are the counsel for which the word of God has been sent. Now we are seeing something that's come by way of this prophetic pattern in the book of Second Kings chapter 4. Pray in other tongues for a while. Pray in other tongues for a while. Po po jo kosozo. Bero ketu lazaza pa adasas. Je koto zozo. Je gosto zozo. Roke, roke. El koto zozo polo doso. Red lo koshozo polo dosos. Glory. We have seen an incredible pattern. An incredible pattern in scripture here. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 38. The Bible says, And Elisha came again to Gilgal. And there was a death in the land. There was famine in the land. There was famine in the land. Just as it is today, there is famine in the land. Do not be carried away by our 100,000 sitting capacity churches. Do not be carried away by our mega churches. There is famine in the land. And allow me to ask, to announce that concerning the government of Jesus, concerning the kingdom of God, there is famine of the world in the land. There is famine of truth in the land. Most of what we are doing is not under the authorization of King Jesus. There is famine of the truth regarding the kingdom of God and the plan that God has for the nations. There is famine in the land. And the sons of the prophet were sitting before him. And prophet Elijah said to his servants, Set on the great pot and seeth pottage for the sons of the prophet. Now there was famine in the land, and this land is Gilgal, the place of circumcision, the place where the children of Israel were circumcised. It's a place of pain. Yes. Now you can see the pain in our society. You can see how women are being plumaged in our society. Go up north and see what terrorism has done. You can see how much the economic perplexity has brought pain in the souls of many. And coupled with the economic travails, there is a famine in the land. But there was an open door. Elisha called the servants to set the pot on, put on the pot, and prepare stew for the sons of the prophet. And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gods his lap full and came and shredded them into the pot of pottage for they knew they knew them not we are talking about a move of much ignorance but it's been done in the advance of the agenda of god in quote now this tells us how much satan under the oper operation of the scepter of wickedness has caused the righteous to carry out iniquity now if you look at the church today without mentioning names we are seeing many now in the church established big churches but they've gone into the wilderness they've gone and found a wild vine and they've gotten herb and they have put it in the mixture the church is supposed to eat the of the pot of life but wild herb I'm talking about 
the tenets of the law they have brought it back into grace and they are telling us that we will be justified by some practices and ordinances of the law even in grace and they are feeding us those kind of food now you see the stature growth transformation for a child is according to the quality of the food intake that the child has now we've seen so much programs now we've seen so much activities we've seen so much crusades so many church services but the growth of the church has not been commensurate with the journeys that she's making into the learning curve that she's going in there's so much that we are doing but much of what we are doing is as a result of our leaders the, the leaders of the church their preference to go after what they will or what they want after their requirements after their standards after their traditions after their own self contrived thoughts they have established the diet of this generation of christians that's why we see that the power to witness to jesus is lost in contemporary christianity the power to proclaim the kingdom of god even the knowledge of the kingdom of god is lost many people look at the kingdom of god today as the church or anything they do to move the agenda of the church somebody say wild vine now none of them knew and this is exactly what the devil does establish a people in ignorance and cause them to carry out iniquity while they do everything cast out demons prophesy do mighty works listen to me i'll say it again they did mighty works by the name of jesus but the lord has regarded all these activities as iniquity they knew not what did they do so they poured out for the men to eat and it came to pass while they were eating the porridge they cried out oh thou man of god there is death in the pot and they could not eat thereof we're seeing this incredible scenario play out with the rise of many people all over social media talking down on the uh, the religious system of our churches talking down on the practices of our churches everybody has made a ministry out of debt in the pot they have made a ministry out of calling the bluff of our leaders and calling them thieves and dingbats and calling them some sort of names we have seen people who have the patience and the ability to labor to test the apostles that call themselves apostles and they found out that they are workers of iniquity they have found out that they are false prophets we have seen the rise of a generation of people who raise the alarm to the unsuspecting that there is death in the pot there's error in our doctrine there's error in our teaching there's error in our landmarks there's error there's error this man is a thief this man is collecting tight this there's so much of accusation and so much of of alarm in the air now but i'll tell you something incredible elisha said bring me some flour and when they gave him the flour he cast it into the pot and he said pour out for the people that they may eat and there was no harm in the pot this scripture is very core in his capacity to instruct us today it's telling us that there is inevitable the rise of a generation of leaders in the church who will come out of the chaos of the present experience and they will come out with the capacity to establish the people of god in the basics of our faith the basics of our faith and this is what this generation is coming with flour is the basic ingredient in the making or the baking of bread flour 
was what prophet Elisha used to change the alarm from there is a death in the pot to there is a miracle in the pot listen allow me activate this anointing that will effect a strange dimension of wisdom in this new generation of leaders I'm talking about the wisdom of Joshua I'm talking about the wisdom of Joshua and how that God magnified this young generation of leaders in the sight of the people so that the commandment of God now became something that everybody would take heed to I'm talking about the rise of a generation that will establish the church again on the basics of the Great Commission because the fact that we are running ministry in our own understanding is a, is a pointer to the fact that we have lost the understanding of the Great Commission. So I sat down with the Holy Spirit and began to ask, Holy Ghost, reveal to me the basics of the Great Commission. Reveal to me the basics so I can provide myself by the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ as a part of this new generation of leaders rising in the nation. Yes, yes, that's a wise decision to make. You must begin to depend on the Holy Ghost, the anointing within to give you the wisdom that you need to chart a new course for the new generations of believers. You must begin to rise out of the mess in our present experience and begin to chart a new course. I'm not just talking about a 30 year long plan. I'm not just talking about a 50 year long plan. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit's capacity to put in your heart a 1000 year long plan for the nations of the earth. The plan to establish the government of God. The plan to bring down governmental structures. The plan to establish the heart of people in godliness. The plan to establish the heart of people in this generation to righteousness. I'm talking about the plan to establish the kingdom of God on earth. The stone that was cut out of the mountain without human hands. That's what I'm talking about. You will be a part of this generation that will wield the kingdom of God and bring the kingdom of God upon this material earth. Listen to me. Listen to me, people. It's about the Great Commission. It's about the basics. We must go back to the basics so that we can start building again from the foundation. The foundation of the present religious system is faulty. We must return to the basics. I'm talking about the family of God, not a clergy lady model. I'm talking about a dining table model where everybody's ear is open to the realms of the spirit. Everybody's eyes is open to the realms of the spirit. I'm talking about a senate god's senate on the earth established to operate within geographical locations with only one agenda to advance the government of jesus christ king jesus within their territory of dwelling. I prophesy the betting of the church of Jesus Christ in Lagos. The church of Jesus Christ in Nigeria with one message, with one agenda, with one expectation, with one hope. I prophesy today in the name of Jesus a new generation that will define the church according to the specification of King Jesus. The church that will move in the advance of the reign of Jesus Christ. The church that will move in the advance 
of the government of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about the church that corporate affairs commission with name and register. I'm talking about the church that will move to advance the governmental institutions and welfare packages that God has for the nations of the world. I'm talking about the church that will influence the nation with the culture of heaven. The church that will influence the nation with the scripture fulfilling life that Christ lives today. A church that will bring people into spiritual mindedness. A church that will bring the people of every tongue, tribe, race, ethnicity, language and creed into the agenda that God has for the people of every nation. I'm talking about the church that has caught the flight of the angel with the crucible of the gospel that shall be preached. There is an angel flying mid-air in the heavens. I'm talking about this church that can tune into the dimension of the flight of this angel so as to capture the revelation of Jesus. Pray in other tongues. We have a praise break now. Papalata shoulda. Ko kesi dizia tu kata palada. Keto stezi dia kaka pa koshos. Jo ketu zeke dizia kaka cha palada tos. Ores to soto pol. Rekete ratusa dahabadas. Hmm. The Lord tells me that there's someone with an interpretation. Please. The Lord just tells me that there is someone with an interpretation for what I just said. We're talking about governmental structures for the nations of the earth. We're talking about our agenda to promote the government of Jesus. Not as a CAC registered organization, no. We're talking about the advance of the kingdom of God. We're talking about the men of God that God is raising at this time that we chart a new political course and governmental course for the nations of the world. And that's what Jesus Christ sent us to do all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth all power in heaven all power all the powers of the principalities and the powers and rulers of wickedness in high places all power on the earth political power governmental power religious power traditional power all power has been given to jesus so on that ground he says go therefore and make disciples of all the nations he didn't say make disciples of some of the nations because today christianity believes that jesus came to make people christians and we have locked ourselves inside that dirty denomination that we call the christian church but no the man sent us that we must go into the world and make disciples of all the nations not some of the nations all the nations so those centennialist people that are still fighting against the propagation of a new civilization they must receive the civilization of king jesus they must receive the civilization of the age to come and we must go and promote and practice and teach the civilization of the new age the civilization of the coming world that's what apostle paul in hebrews chapter 6 verse 5 calls the powers of the age to come we must go forth into every nation Pull down every occupying spirit. Pull down every spirit that has established the status quo and establish the authority of Christ in the land. We must establish the authority of Christ in the land. And this is the goal. Make disciples of every nation. Make disciples of all nations. Now just as America has discipled Nigeria and Nigeria has made it a religious activity to carry out a census for general elections every four years. Nigeria is a veritable di disciple of America today because we have patterned our life after the American fashion. We have patterned our politics after the American fashion. We have patterned our laws after the American fashion. We have patterned our education after the British and American fashion. We are talking about the church's role to disciple the nation. And we start with Nigeria. The discipling of Nigeria. 
We must pattern the model that Nigeria will comply with. We must be the church that is the light of the world, that's fulfilling messianic scripture. We must pattern the nations according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. We must pattern the nations according to the government of Jesus Christ. We must pattern the nations according to the deliberations of Jesus Christ, the legislation of Jesus Christ. We must pattern the nations according to the constitution of heaven. We must pattern the nations. We must make disciples out of Nigeria. We must make disciples out of Nigeria. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Many people look at this and we think it's water baptism. Error. To baptize the nations in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost means to completely and fully immerse the nations in the agenda of God through the three dispensations. We must immerse the nations in the agenda of God so that the nations will find their identity in the agenda of God. Much like a laundry man, they will have to go into the agenda of God to find their relevance. They will have to go into the agenda of God to find their identity. They must have to go into the agenda of God to find their place. The end has come to man trying to establish rulership on his own. The end has come to operating under the spirit of Cain. Nations must be submitted to the agenda of God. Now, what is this agenda of God? I'm talking about God's plan to lead the nations. I'm talking about God's plan to establish his reign over the nations. And this is what he did when he was officiating his providence with the children of Israel in the wilderness. His government was for man. And when he was leading his children, he was communicating plans and programs. He communicated the health plan when none of them was feeble. He communicated the recovery plan even after all of them were beaten by snakes. So long as they looked up at the brazen serpents, they were healed. He communicated the life insurance plan so that the blood of the lamb was smeared on the doorpost of their houses. The angel of death passed and none of them was killed. He communicated the welfare plan where they lived on the miracle of the manna and the quail. The Lord communicated the defense plan where he went ahead of them and chased away the inhabitants of their promised land before them. The Lord communicated the plan to guide them as the shepherd. Eko Tazazabia Garas Koto Pelidadita Kota Sadaka as the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night he protected them from the elements he protected them from the harshness of this desert sun and talking about God's plan to brood over his people that are obedient to him we must bring the nations into this plan because this plan transited the dispensation of the father to the dispensation of the son we saw God's government with man. Oh, Kato Dapaladasa. Jesus came and said, Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. We see that he extended his desire to now disciple two categories of nations. The first world nations in Peter and Andrew. The third world nations in John and James. The call to the nations was exemplified in the earthly ministry of Jesus where he began to communicate the plans that the Father was communicating to Israel. Now Jesus communicated the educational plan where he was teaching of the kingdom and teaching about the blessedness of the life in the realms of the spirit. He was educating the people on the life that yearns, that tests for God, that hungers for righteousness. He was educating the people on the kingdom of God, the authority of Christ over the body, over the flesh, over the lust of the eyes, over the pride of life, the authority of Christ. He was educating his people on the awareness of the spirit realm. When he did this, he communicated the educational plan. He communicated the welfare plan. 
and he provided food for 5,000 men. Miraculously, food for 7,000 men, two different occasions. He communicated the life insurance plan. We saw that he raised up dead Lazarus. He raised up Jairus' daughter. We see Jesus communicating the health plan. He healed their sick. Those that were sick with all various types of diseases. He healed them. He communicated the health plan. He communicated the plans to cast out demons before them. Those that were oppressed by the devil, he saves. Do you hear what I said? I didn't say he saved. I said he saves. The deliverer is still alive. And the opportunity for us to immerse the nation in his agenda as the Holy Ghost in man. God's government in man. Ekoto, through the power of the Holy Ghost. We have the ability to help the nations find their identity in this agenda of God so that we will, they will enjoy the booties that comes out of heaven for the nations of the world. Through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, we are seeing the rise of sons of God whose manifestation the nations have awaited. Listen to me, if you don't understand what I'm saying, pray in other tongue because what I'm saying is mystery. You must be ready to understand what I'm saying. And seek help because not by power, not by might. I'm not telling you logics. I'm not telling you theology. I'm speaking under the influence of the Holy Ghost. This is my testimony of Jesus. So you must be in the spirit to understand what I'm saying. The time has come for us to communicate the plans and programs for the nations of the world. There is an educational plan, especially when ignorance has bedeviled the nations. When our educational schemes and programs cannot open us into the vision that God has for a people. A generation is being taught to just live a mediocre life. I'm talking about the generation of Africans that have not been able to establish a life of their own. A generation of profanity and education helps us establish this mediocrity. There is need for us to find our agenda, find our position, find our identity in the agenda of God so that we can receive the educational plan that comes from the realms of the spirit. We must receive the welfare plan because the nations of the earth are now bedeviled by food shortage. There is such shortage of truth. There is shortage of the word of God. There is shortage of food in the nation. We need to help the nations find their identity in the agenda of God because there is a health plan coming from the realms of the spirit, especially when the nations of the earth have been bedeviled by sickness and diseases and viral conditions. When the oppression of the devil has limited the GDP of many nations. There is need for us to submit to the agenda of God. So that the rise of sons of God can be appreciated by nations. The welfare plan has got to come back. The educational plan has got to come back. The life insurance plan has come. Hey, Kotojo those. In the name of Jesus, I stand in the authority of the name of Jesus to put an end to viral conditionings. The Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. Every demon that has established the nations in ignorance, lose your grip and hold tonight. In the name of Jesus, every principality that has established the nations in defiance, Lose your grip and hold from the shoulders of nations. Every nation, every demon that has established viral conditions, herpes, HIV and AIDS, every disease that has defied medical <laughs> solutions, in the name of Jesus, be broken tonight. Lose your grip and hold from these ones. Because these ones, they are the properties of God. God has to use these ones to do what he wants to do. Our Father is at work now. Release your grip from the hand, from the shoulders of those people. Release confusion from that family. Stop that process of divorce. I stop that process tonight in the name of Jesus. 
I stop that process. I stand and stop that process. I cry restore to families. Restoration to families. Restoration of love. Restoration of trust. Restoration of integrity. Restoration of purity. Restoration to families. Restoration of unity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The nations must be implored to identify with the agenda of God for this dispensation. This is what it means to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The nations, especially as they are lying in ruins, and desolations as a result of their carnal proclivities as a result of their guidance according to the whims and caprices of their self corruption has brought desolation upon the nations corruption has ruined our cities and we have realized that not by power not by might but by my spirit that's what the lord says so we must baptize and fully immerse the nations in the agenda that god has to cause the implementation of his government programs and plans through the power of the Holy Ghost. Nigeria must bow in the name of Jesus. Nigeria must submit. Nigeria must get to the end of themselves. They must get to the end of their political paraphernalia. We must get to the end of our personal might that can only do evil and we must begin to submit to the authority of God. We must do that so that the desolations of many generations may be raised up. We must do that so that we can repair the ruined cities. We must do that so that we can raise up the former desolations. Nigeria must submit to the authority of Christ so that her system can be restored. So that her dignity can be restored. So that the glory of God may be revealed in our land. Nigeria must submit to the government of Jesus. If it has to be that we let go of democracy and the rule of law, it has to be in the name of Jesus. So that our institutions can be established again. Our lives and the lives of our children can be secured. So that peace may come back to our territories. So that the dignity of life may return to our people. Oh, Katazaza Paladas Agados, Zelelekete said the headers. Beros Tosozo, Copolo Dosozo. I must uh, reach out again to people uh, I'm reaching from other nations. Um, you see, what the Lord speaks to Nigeria, He speaks to people of every nation. Uh, because there is something about the degeneration of man, there is something about the devil's agenda. To bring limitation upon man and it goes he does this through the propagation of the power of self now the biggest enemy to man is the flesh and the flesh limits man by helping man make carnal choices under the ages of self stay with me what self has done in Nigeria self has done in America what self has done in America, self has done in England, self has done in Saudi Arabia. I'm talking about the works of the devil, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh and pride of life. Man's present predicament, how he has brought ruins upon himself and his generation. is because man has despised the rulership of God. A man has tended towards the rulership of self. So the message that I'm preaching, I'm talking about Nigeria, is because I feel a burden for this nation. But I want to tell you in the name of Jesus that the same thing that is accruable to Nigeria is accruable to any nation of the world. Under the preaching of this gospel of the kingdom. This gospel of the kingdom speaks about the rise of a generation of people who depend on the Holy Spirit to, to receive power over self. 
so that they can establish society in righteousness. It is God's redemption plan for the world through the salvation of man. When God saved man, he gave man power over sin, power over self, power over pride, power over lust. And Jesus exemplified this during his earthly ministry. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, he has given the people the right and the authority to exemplify it wherever they go, so long as they are in the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible tells us that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. It's a universal principle for the kingdom. So long as you have attained the dimension of Christ, so long as you have attained the Christ state of being, wherever you present yourself, Jesus is presented there. Wherever your legs take you to, Jesus is presented there. Could it be in the parliament, Jesus is presented there. Could it be in the club, Jesus is presented there. Could it be in Poland, Jesus is presented there. Could it be in Brazil, Jesus is presented there. And when Jesus is presented, the works of the devil is destroyed. When Jesus is presented, lust of the eyes is destroyed. When Jesus is presented, lust of the flesh is, is, is destroyed. When Jesus is presented, the pride of life is destroyed. And we are talking to the nations of the earth today. We are telling them to come into the agenda that God has for the mass production of Jesus. To the multiplication of the presentation of Jesus across the tribes, across the tongues, across the nationalities, across the ethnicities. So that righteousness can exalt nations. So that the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Wow! This is good news to the nations of the earth. That they can all come into believing in Jesus and cash into this heavenly booty and tie the devil, display the manifold wisdom of God to the principalities and the powers and rulers of wickedness, tap into the unsearchable riches of Christ so that they can all enjoy the fellowship of the mystery. It is not just the business of the church, this is the business of an entire society in Christ. The goal of the gospel is to restore societies in Christ. The goal of the gospel is to restore nations in righteousness. The goal of the gospel is to restore nations in godliness. The goal of the gospel is to restore nations in God. We must come into the agenda of God. It's a call to go deeper. It's a call to come into the wisdom of God. It's a call to come into the authority of Christ. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you your own share of Christ. It is the Father's good pleasure to help you keep his commandments. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the testimony of Jesus. Come on, everybody. Come on into this agenda. Come on into this plan. Come on. Come on. There is little or no time to waste. Come into your share of Christ. Come into your own place. Ha, ha, kota. In my father's house, there are many mansions. There. Come and take your mansion. Come and take your share. Come on. Come on. There's a call to go deeper. Come on, Hida. Let us enjoy this booty. But it's heaven's booty for every nation, tribe, and tongue. What an incredible opportunity we have it. Now, I want us to look carefully. <laughs> and there's something that's happening in the nations. And if you are not careful, you will miss out on the greatest opportunity to give Jesus a feature place in your society. Listen to me. We have reached a crucial moment in time. This is a global prophecy coming through. It's not just for Nigeria, it's for all the nations of the world. You see, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes the Lord wants us to be alert because he's sending the ministry of Elijah the prophet and this generation of Elijah they are preaching a specific message that will restore the hearts of the fathers to the hearts of the sons 
the hearts of the children to the hearts of the fathers and this intergenerational reconciliation has a much greater and positive impact on the land now concerning the destiny of the nations there is an intergenerational reconciliation that will be expressed by the handing over of mantles from the older generation of leaders to the younger generation of leaders the exchange of batons or mantles is an indication of the inevitability of vacuum in the present camps. In the camps of our leaders, in the camps of our fathers, there is a vacuum. There is an expression of vacuum. Now, does it come to mind that the passing of H.W. Bush has left a vacuum for the fathers? Does it also come to mind that at the same time, a political luminary in the person of Tony Aneni, I'm talking to Nigerians again, has passed? Does it tell you that in the quarters of government policy making and politicking, there is a vacuum? Does this point that there are transfer? There is a transfer of baton or mantle. I'm saying this doesn't just have political signification. It also has religious symbolism. There is imminent the transfer of baton from the older generation to the younger generation. There is a call for the rise of a new generation of leaders in the religio-political dynamics of nations. And there is a vacuum for leaders that can chart a new course for nations. And leaders that can chart a new course for the church. Listen to me, people. You must lock hands with the Holy Spirit so that he will not just raise leaders, he will make you and conscript you into this agenda that he has to raise leaders that will be able to predetermine a 1,000 year long plan for nations. Listen to me. I'm talking about leaders that can establish governmental thought structures in the minds of people that will advance the kingdom reign of Jesus. I'm talking about leaders that will surmount the, the wisdom and the training that they get from school of leadership in Yale or Harvard. I'm talking about leaders that have been prepared in the backside of nowhere by God himself. I'm talking about leaders in the capacity of Christ. I'm talking about saviors rising upon Mount Zion. You must toil and wait and pray that the Lord will find you worthy to be conscripted in this new generation of leaders rising in the nations of the earth. I want to end today's show by prophesying that every wisdom required to forge a new leadership for the church for the nation, for your family, for the government, in your business. When I say your nation, I mean maybe you're a lawyer, you are a, you are a doctor, you are a, you are an engineer, you are a professional. The wisdom you require, the new heart you require to engage the requirement of leadership in a way that will advance the kingdom of God, the Lord gives it to you. In the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord is upon you to cause you to grow in wisdom and in stature. Yes, a generation of people that are growing in rank, 
they are rising now out of this particular season. There's a generation of people rising in rank and they are rising to advance the kingdom of God. We are rising to advance the authority of Christ. We are rising to influence and bring the kingdom of God upon our world so that the culture of man will be updated. The culture of man will be redefined. The culture of righteousness will be established in the nations of the earth. And you see, the world will be better for it. The new heaven and the new earth will come. A people who have seen the civilization of the new heaven. They have seen the civilization of the new earth. And they have prepared themselves to reign with Jesus Christ as kings. They will rise on the earth and they will give the Father the much desired glory that he planted the trees of righteousness on the earth for. Righteousness can be propagated on the earth. And it has to do with the value you place on this agenda that God has for the nations. You have to be a part of it. You have to be a part of it. My name is Odion Ikbuga. It's such an incredible privilege to always be here in the name of Jesus and proclaim this biggest reality television show that heaven has for the nations of the earth this time. It's God's pleasure that a generation of people who see and hear into heaven, they rise on the earth. They give their own unique and individual testimony of Jesus and advance the kingdom of God in the nations. The, pre the gospel of the kingdom is being preached. The kingdom of God is being practiced and taught. And you are a witness. The nations are hearing. And it's a call for you to join this bandwagon. It's a bandwagon of a faceless a generation rising in the nation near you and doing only one thing moving to establish the sovereignty of Christ in the territories of the earth. I want to say thank you for joining the hashtag Matthew 2414 show. It was such an incredible privilege to do this. And um, it's my pleasure to always say be sober, be vigilant, and have the thirst for the operations of God so God can find you worthy to partake in the work of the ministry. Till I see you again next week, same time. Stay blessed. The Lord be with you. Bye now. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Your name is exalted. What a day, what a day, what a day. Ora katapala da sozaka. Hey, Pastor Sheyi, thanks for joining. Best man in the jumbo. Joan Paul, thank you for joining. Egage, Victoria. Antikumbi, thank you for joining. Dada for Labi Olawale, Rajid Saka, thanks for joining. I appreciate you. Kibolo Knowledge. Pastor Wale, thank you so much. Antiochomiata, thank you so much for joining. I also want you to celebrate these people, Gospel Team and Radio. Uh, they're giving us their platform to reach out even through this time. I want to crave your indulgence, please. Is there any way you can be a part of this work? It's a good work and we're doing it exclusively to advance the government of Jesus. We're doing it exclusively to bring people into the knowledge of the Son of God. There's a way God is telling you to help us. Reach in, reach, uh, reach on my inbox and then communicate with us render your right hand of fellowship we politely we're not just asking you as god lays it on your heart so we can um, move the ministry to the permanent site <laughs> my name is odion ikbuga i'll come again shortly and i'm saying bye now <laughs>